yesterday's job, change the ATF fluid and filters. This I don't think has been done for many, many years. The fluid looks pretty uh, disgusting and burnt. Uh, this car does have a tow bar, so I suspect it was used for towing at some point. The car's got um, a 101,000 miles on it, um, and we don't know when it was last changed, so it's worth doing it. Uh, you can only change half the fluid at any one time. The gearbox takes six litres, but three litres are held up in the torque converter, so you can only drain three litres. So the first job is to uh, remove this bash guard, uh, which protects the uh, bottom of the automatic transmission. Um, there are two um, bolts here, and there are two bolts just illuminated there to the right of that cable going vertical. There's also a spring you can just make out there that needs to be detached. You'll need a 17mm uh, ratchet or spanner on this. Down there the uh, spring is attached to the bash guard on the right hand side and it's attached to the lever on the left. Um, I could get some long nose pliers in there and try and undo it but I think if I undo the bash plate it should just drop down and swing out the way and make our life easier. The spring. Oh, we've got snail shell just for that. There we go. So I think the best way to reinstall is to attach the spring and then push the uh, plate back up into place. I think that's going to be our uh, winning formula. I'll be honest, getting the spring out of that tiny hole was a hell of a battle. And that is the offending article. Uh, but it's off now. But don't underestimate this. I've stuck a large um, painter's tray underneath the uh, sump of the gearbox now. There are four 13mm bolts, one in each corner. So I've um, cracked the front bolts. Uh, go easy on them because they're quite badly seized in there, so just work them out gently. Um, and I've removed one of the rears and partially removed the other rear. And we're just dribbling out fluid now, so I'm just going to let the majority just run out of this gentle pace until until it slows down and then we can move to uh, taking the pan off a bit better. I think we're down to basically the sump full now. So I'm just going to gently lower it down. I also notice there's evidence of silicon. I don't know if that's part of the gasket system or whether that's um, something someone's put in afterwards. Okay, we're in. I won't get too close because it's still dripping. Um, but in hindsight, the fluid doesn't look too bad. While it's still dripping, I'm going to clean up um, the silicon that's been blasted around the side of this thing. Um, and then once I've done that, and hopefully it's stopped dripping, we can uh, change the filter which is inside this housing here. There's a lot of silicon sealant on the old pan and I'm just hoping that this was a precautionary measure by the last owner. Um, I'm going to clean this up um, with a brake cleaner. Um, I have cracked off this screw here and this screw here. Be careful, make sure you get the right fitting screwdriver and just gently wiggle them out. You don't want to snap or round those off. This is the filter. I don't know if you can make it out, but you can definitely see some uh, bits of rubbish in there. Um, you can clean these out um, if they're in good condition. Um, the kit I came with came with a gasket set and uh, replacement filter, so I might as well just replace the filter. Yeah, you can see a few little lumps and bumps and bits and pieces in there. So we'll clean those out with brake cleaner and uh, get that put back together in a minute. Okay, I'm having to use a razor blade to get this gasket off because it's held on. It's free floating, but it's held on through suction. And I can't quite get my gloved fingers under it. So I just need to get some air underneath it. And hopefully, it'll peel away. There we go, that extended it itself through the power of gravity. Very fragile. Right, so there we go, one gasket off. 
new gasket set which comes with obviously the outer gasket, the new filter and the new gasket for the filter housing. That's the new gasket held up there just with the um, suction of the old oil and now I'm going to uh, fit the new filter and housing. Uh, I can't film it and do it at the same time. New filter and housing fitted. Um, be aware that this screw actually t um, preloads the filter so the filter is almost like a spring in itself so you have to sort of gradually tighten this up and it will bring the housing up against the um, underside of the underside of the uh, transmission gearbox uh, making sure that this is all sealed down flat around the edge uh, when you first put it in it's kind of there's a bit of a gap but just keep talking it up gradually until it flattens it down but don't go mental on it tight is tight enough I think on these I'm just inspecting up around where the gasket goes um, uh, before I refit it and I notice there's a lot of chalky corrosion down the back end here um, if I think I need to clean that because uh, I don't think it'll make a very good seal for the gasket. It does kind of scrape off, so I'm going to gently work around and remove as much of this chalkiness as I can. It's probably worth taking a bit of time to do this now rather than wait for it to leak. Um, so yeah, I'll come back when I've cleaned that up. Uh, I've taken the time to uh, run a tap up through the four bolt holes because they were very chalky and uh, quite grindy to get out. wasn't entirely happy with them. So I've also run a uh, die over the um, uh, bolts as well to clean them up. So hopefully they'll go in and talk up okay. Now I think it's time to put the uh, sump gasket on and fit the gas the sump itself. New gasket fitted to the sump tray. And in the ultimate irony, my uh, lid is seized on my aluminium anti-seize pot. Sump back on and uh, the bolts torqued to 20 newton meters. I'm glad I bothered to run a tap through the bolt holes because they went in nice and easily compared to the fight it took to get them out. So yeah, well worth doing if you've got the time. Right, so I'm going to do battle and see if I can get the spring back into the uh, control arm for the kick down before fitting the metal plate back into place. It was a lot easier to get in than it was to get out. Okay, and that's the bash guard fitted. A little bit of a fiddle to get the bolt started, especially the ones up underneath there, but uh, once they're in and started, it's a uh, simple stuff. The amount of extracted liquid uh, poured into this jug is just under two litres. Filling up the gearboxes through the dipstick hole which as you can see is pretty tiny. So I have cleaned out this old oil bottle which has this narrow spout on it. Uh, it's had a thorough cleaning with brake cleaner um, and I can add 750 mil at a time into the gearbox. We're aiming for two litres then we'll run it up and check it and see what it's like. Maybe we should have done a practice run before this, but some of it went in. Right. Which I threw all over the place. <laughs> 